These European scientists are setting off in the early morning to gather samples around the Rio de Vero Lagoon in Portugal. The lagoon offers a rich but fragile 75 square kilometer ecosystem of wetlands, seagrasses and salt marshes used as nursery areas for bivalves, crustaceans, fish and birds. It's a natural treasure that, as with other European coastal lagoons, is facing huge threats. Among the most common problems we find here is the high presence of nutrients in the water. These nutrients favour the bloom of green algae. The green algae absorb oxygen from the water and eventually the whole aquatic ecosystem can lose its environmental health and quality. These last years we have also found a new trend of pollutants, chemical compounds from drugs and other nanoparticles that can also challenge the quality of the environment around. Climate change could also pose dangerous threats. It could alter volumes of water in the lagoon, the temperature and acidity, which could then weaken further any already delicate ecosystem. Researchers want to know how key vegetable and animal species in the lagoon's trophic chain would react to sudden changes in their ecosystems. We can predict the future climate change patterns with models, and if we match those models with our biological research, we can foresee how these crucial species will evolve over time, if they'll increase, decrease, or if they'll simply disappear from the lagoon's ecosystems. This scientific effort, part of a European Union research project, includes detailed fieldwork in four coastal lagoons around Europe, each with different realities and challenges, but with a common urgency in the need to protect them. Biological data is matched with sophisticated computer modelling. Researchers try to predict, using interactive maps, how climate change induced alterations, but also pressure from tourism, industry or agricultural land use will affect the lagoon's health and sustainability. Of course there is a large uncertainty, but we have to remember that uh, these models are the best available knowledge. I mean, we are collecting the best available knowledge from a scientific point of view into these models. So this is not science fiction. <laughs> the research also involves dealing with the local population. Scientists organize focus groups with hunters and fishermen to provide scientific information and receive factual data and meaningful feedback on the lagoon's real potential, but also its main weaknesses. We provide them with maps, basically, and we ask them to use dots and colors to show us on the maps which areas of the lagoon they feel are developing well and which areas they feel are being threatened. So besides getting the information about which issues there are at stake, we also get the geographic location of them. A three-year research effort that scientists, hunters and fishermen hope will help to preserve some quite unique natural ecosystems. We have the sea, then the sea inlet, then the lagoon, and then nothing else except lots of motorways. There's no more space for wildlife. So all hunting-friendly spots around this area are in the lagoon. That's why we, hunters, also have to fight to protect it and preserve the natural balance of these ecosystems. Each lagoon is unique. If we lose this natural heritage, we'll also lose a bit of our own identity.